Hello guys, it's Rosa Hart. Anna! You're with Rumples? Oh, well, how dare you? Oh, I'm kidding, you can have him. <laughs> We're not interested in him right now. Or someone else. Oh, it's, and sorry about last time, about 14 minutes and the video for the phone call. But I found this and I had to bring it back. Her smile faded as she pulls out a flyer for us to see. An announcement. From the looks of it, four days from now, I will make a speech about the changes that are happening in Alamfila. Changes? That doesn't sound very promising. It means bad news, but it may be worthwhile to take a look. This might give us some insight into what's happening at the palace. Hannah is still in hiding, but it seems very likely she could be involved in all of this somehow. They could be plotting something special for that day. Jack, can I will to the vent. Then we'll make sure no none to stand out. I'm coming too. Uh, that's a bad idea, Rose. I need to know what's happening. I can't hide forever, Watson. I will go, and I do not need anyone persons to do so. <laughs> oh, I'm going to die. Hmm. Well, I guess you're technically the new next queen after all. Thorn, DeLorean, don't encourage her. We both know how stubborn she is. She won't stay put even if we command her to. Lauren looked at me and winks. Purple lets out a heavy sigh. Watson and Carmen will accompany her then. Also nods. Carmen looks somewhere er, uh, staying, but eventually nods as well. So, till that day comes, we all need to prepare for the worst case of scenario. Yeah, because I'm a person who wants to go see the show. Uh, take the wanted Quinder Bull to the show. I practice being. I have been practicing my magic non stop since the day we've heard of Azure's speech. I continue working on my barrel and why I also continue to tip that one offense spell Watson tried to teach me. Okay, remember what I've told you. Focus your energy on the tips of your fingers until you feel the current flowing through your fingers. Focus. Aim. Nothing happened, Watson. How dare you? Okay. Good. Now to cast the spell at me again. <laughs> I stretch out my hand. Imagine the energy gathering at my fingertips. I see a spark, and I begin to cast the spell. Good, keep going. At the end of my cast, I can feel lightning strike, shaking down my arms. Now release it. I slay the walls in as much strength as I muster, but barely touch his barrier before it fades away. I grow. You're getting there, Rose. The magic is weak, but it might still be able to paralyze someone for a time, so long as you hit them when they don't have a barrier up. But the speech is tomorrow. I will not be able to master it by then. You won't need it to. Let's not assume things will be so bad. We are only going there to watch your speech. If that's all it is, you won't need to need your magic. Two of us continue doing work, but after a few more rounds, my arms are sore and my mind is foggy. Halston calls it a day, and the two of us retreat to our rooms for the night. I have tossed and turned in my bed for what feels like an hour, but sleep will not come. It's as been 
almost a month since I went into town, and it is impossible. It's possible to not imagine the worst possible setting for tomorrow. I will probably be awake until sunrise. I turn to glance at the doll that Walson gave me not so long ago. She sits on my table. Her, uh, her glimpsing eyes stare back at me. I wonder if he is already asleep. Maybe he can help me calm my nerves. Watson, there is no, there is only silence. Maybe he's already asleep. I'm about to leave when the door suddenly opens. Rose? Hello, Watson. Let me guess, couldn't sleep. I nod. Come on in then. Hello, Watson. I sat on his bed and looked around. My eyes shift to the table where I noticed a pile of sewing materials and a set of puppets. Have you been working on your puppets? Yeah, I couldn't sleep either. Huh. It's been a while since I did a show, but I wanted to make sure my puppets and materials are ready to go once this is all over. I'm sure the children are looking forward to seeing your shows again. Yeah. Since silence follows as Walson sits down beside me with one of his puppets, he begins to slowly sew one of the, the seams. The silence is dead. He remains busy, but maybe I should say something. I, I'm worried about what might happen tomorrow. You think too much, Rose. I do. I stare at the puppets on his tables. When this is over, will you finally let me be your, your assistant? Austin smiles and pats my head. Yes. When this is all over, I give you a spotlight. I'm sure the children will love your puppet show. Talking about what happened afterward makes me feel normal. It gives me some type of hope. Hope that eventually everything will go back to normal. I feel better now. Thank you, Walton. Oh, I'm sure I did. I'm not sure I did anything. You have just been being here with me. You know I'll do anything for you, little star. Little star. There is that nickname again. Hmm, does it bother you? No, I just wonder where it came from. Oh right, I never told you a story, did I? Back when I was still your mother's person, my life was dull and empty. When you showed up, your sin were the same as mine, but your light never fade. You became my hope, and in the dark place, my light. This is why I consider you my little star. I can only stare at Watson as smiling at me. Right now, all I want is to stay by his side, to stay with the comfort of his warmth. I look at him and I threw shift into my head, tilting my cheeks pink. What is it? Can I stay with you tonight? No. <laughs> what? <laughs> well... Oh, <laughs> Walson's face is made red. He looks shocked. I can't. It's not that I don't want you to, but I might. I mean, um, uh, <laughs> uh, he glances away and begins to mumble to himself. I suddenly feel directed. Don't make that face, little star. Walson sighs. Okay, you can stay. Really? Yeah. I'm going to so regret this later. Aww, so cute. We both lay side to side in bed, shifting only slightly. Olsen is offensively stiff. I wonder or why. I look my arms around his waist and snuggle into the crook of his neck. Olsen tense breathes in me. I feel like I'm being punished. Yeah, <laughs> I would too. What? Nothing. Nothing at all. Thank you for letting me stay. My room feels colder than normal tonight. I couldn't help think about tomorrow and when about father and my words show off as I try to focus on Watson's warmth. Please do not leave me as well, Watson. Rose, look at me. 
I moved back to look up at him. Wolfson stares at me with a hand, making it difficult to look away. His features are lit by a soft moonlight, making them stand out all the more. My heart skips a beat. I'm not going anywhere, Rose. I will always be here, wherever you are. I promise to always protect you. I reach out and touch his cheek. Thank you. He smiles at me before putting his arm around my waist and pulling me closer. I snuggle against his chest, taking in his warmth. And I eventually fall asleep in his arms and we sleep together. Today is the day. Everyone has been busy preparing for the speech. I was told to relax and I have used the opportunity to move the forest and get some fresh air. If only, only everywhere air was as peaceful as here. Rose, I turn around to see you and slowly walk towards me. A hesitant smile on her face. Aubrey, I'm sorry that I could not be much of help during these down times. You've already helped me enough, Aubrey. Your sport fought when I did not. You stay. You have to stay safe, and you and the others. You truly change. Ern takes my hands in hers and look at me sighing. Promise me you'll come back to us. I'll be paying that nothing happens today, but it it does. I bless you to put your safety first, Ern. I may not be your real mother, but you've always been my daughter. Very fun through me. I have been cruel to her ever since she fed came into our lives, and yet she still treats me so warmly. I do not deserve your kindness after all the things I've done to you, Ems and Rod. I am so sorry. Arm pulls me into a hug and moves down my hair. That. It's all in the past now, dear. What matters now is the present. I nod and close my eyes. I miss out on so many things when I close my heart up to everyone. I have always thought I was alone, but I was wrong. Thank you, Aubrey. I'll just call her mother. Sarah's speech starts in an hour, and everyone is making a last-minute preparation before heading into town. Aunt Ems and Anne will stay behind, as Rod... And Rumple volunteered to watch over them. So they're staying too. Gloria and Perfil left yesterday to attend a meeting with the fairies. And then they found someone who holds important information about Mother and her plans. And approached me, her eyes cray. Rose, you should see your mother. You should see your mother there. What will you do? I'll, I haven't really thought about it yet. We are bond to face her sometime soon. I know that she is your mother, princess, but your emotions are ready to face her? I take it back by her question. Jill, I apologize for being blunt, but we all have the concern the worst possible scenario, don't we? I need to know that the princess is ready to face her. In a battlefield, one must not hesitate. Jen continues to look at me, waiting for my answer. I finally face her with determination. I will face her, and I will stop her. The queen. I stand in the alley with. Watson, Jill and Carmen make sure to stay hidden in shadows as we watch the sea of people move towards the pallet. Uh, Jack is scouting around the plaza for the nights possibly, and we have been waiting here for him. There are so many people. Okay, this is where we split up. Remember. That we are trying to avoid needless battle. If anything should happen, flee is the better opportunity. I am not fool. I will not pick a fight. Would put anyone in needless danger. And I'm glad you understand. Remember, we are only here to watch and listen. I do not want us to get into a sin if we have to avoid it. 
So, anything goes wrong, we need to retreat. Hey, princess. I understand. Your safety is the number one prior, after all. He's right. Your safety is most valid. Remember, princess, your life does not belong to you anymore. This kingdom future's in your hands. I look away. I know that. Joe's son appears with a sudden foul. Look who I found. I turned to look at Jack and noticed the man beside him. My eyes wander slightly of him. Friss? Jen push him and Friss swung towards me. He falls to his knees, one inch away from me. You're okay. Thank goodness you're alright, princess. I twist at the sight of his face. There's no side of wicked smile that was on his face when he was under the gun of fag. Towards he looked confused. The relief in his eyes seems generous. Are you true the fag or are you fat first are you fag or are you both? I'm the first you always known, Princess. You're literally the king. I raised the eyebrow. I cannot remember what happened weeks ago. When the mass falls I can still remember when I remember what happened weeks ago. When the mask falls from his face, the room of the terror. In the moment I saw Frisk's face, no matter what Fag said, Fag was in lead with iron and myth. The man I saw back then was definitely Frisk, even if he could not confirm it. What are you doing here? Frisk Fish. I've been searching for you. Why? So you can take me back to Mythal? Are you here to kill me? Frisk lowers his brow, squinting his hand and turning out his side. I am not sure. I will not serve you. Or to mi serve me all. My loyalty has always been to the kingdom and to you. I will never hurt you, princess. But I do not blame you for doubting me, my father. I wouldn't stop him if I knew. First glance up at me slowly, his fresh resolve. I had just escaped yesterday when I was captured by the knights. I managed to escape from them today, but only barely. I I was supposed to meet the Lady Baron yesterday. First glance, not at me, but through me, as if he remembered something unpleasantly. That was when I was eight, able to take control of my body again, just a few days ago. I've been searching for you, but instead of finding some witches who seem to be in league with the Lady Baron, I request a assistant with her as soon as possible because I wasn't sure how long I could keep Vag at bay. At bay? First is plain. About Vag? No, about this assistant. Princess, this could all be some ruse of his. I have a responsibility to at least hear him out. What do you want from Perifio? I have important information about her. Mother? Lady Perifu did say that her and Delore were going to meet with someone who had information on her. And you believe that, that their meeting was with this man? Karim turned to Frisk, clear his phone. That seems like it could be, Karim. How are we supposed to believe you? Frisk is silent for a few moments. After some time, he speaks again, more hesitated. I know that apology won't change the fact that I've betrayed the princess and the kingdom. But right now, I am doing best as to right my wrongs while I still have control over my body. The knights are still searching for me as we speak, so make this as brief as I can. Hen is growing weak. What? I haven't been myself for the past weeks, but I still have part of that partials of Fag's memories. I remember that she is in bed and still being treated for runes that she stunned during the Great War. Then she is now sick like peripheral, only Mother seems to have the worse of it than her. I have overheard Mythos say that the Crystal no longer recognized her as the Soul Bear. Peripheral said something similar. Her, but she said she could no longer feel Mother connected with the bear. But what Frisk just said. It seems that the crystal has 
seeing both of you as barons, it's searching its inner truth to both of you. That might be why Hen hasn't recognized her full power and has remained weak. Boston stood at first uh, eyes widen. The crystal has two bearers? I didn't think such a thing was possible. Is that why Hen still refused to show herself in public? Yes, the witches who used to be on her side doubt her capable of, to rule. None of them want to help her when she is still so weak. Mithal figured that that the only way to get the crystal fully step in is to drain the rest of, of your power. That is why the palace has issued high bounty on your head. But father is no longer in, in, in hunting you. There are a bit a rift between him and Methal because of this. Walson crossed his arm, his fresh and thoughtful. And Sprite Hen hasn't this point of Walton yet. If he's still alive, it means he must still pay a important role in her plan. First expression quickly moans into something grin as he frowns down to the ground. You're right. Austin and I strange a look before we go turn back to Fris. With all plans to kill my father today. Fris eyes are dim, his mouth pulled into a tight grim. All I can do is stare at him, uncertain of what he has just told me. Hen will show herself to the public, public today. She and Mithal plan to kill father in front of an announcement, hoping that their fear disses with a few of the term. They think viewing the term might be making her stronger. They plan to use the fear of the public to tension their own ends. This is no good. With many people here, the term might indeed see power again. Even a week Hun will be doomed to fright, but we can stand more of a chance against her now that we, if she fused the town with them. Princess, save the kingdom, Pl please save the kingdom, princess. Chris looks at me a turn. I shake my head and look slowly. I am confused. You betrayed us, but then you still help us as well. What side are you on? The only reason why I am working for them in the first place is because of my curse, I swear it. Urs tilts up his- stands up, but his nails wobble, and suddenly he is down on the ground again. He clinks his chest. Urs? No, not yet. Urs looked at me, his face from covering sweat. I have no idea how long I can suffer, fag, so please, bind me, freeze me, do whatever you can to keep from chasing after you. I do not want to hurt anyone anymore. Her snails over and forward touches the ground. Please. Watson. I know. Also snaps his finger and a rope of light appears around Frisk's wrist, pulling him down to the ground. I narrow my eyes at Frisk, even as he curved his head to look at me. Thank you. You don't have much of time left. I planned to turn my message to the Lone Bear, but I left it in your capable hands instead. First, I am sorry. I will do anything to protect my change. Now go. Joe nods at me. Don't worry. Jack and I will keep an eye on him. Joe quickly informs us the nice birds go around the plaza and gives us a clue around where we might hide to avoid their paring eyes. After he has finished his brief, Watson, Conrad, and I hurry off. Father, please watch over us today. There are so many people here. There, I have no idea this seems harmless speech will be a start of their nightmares. I have been fighting with fingers ever since we got here. My Nerves slow take over me. There are so many nights. I pulled down my hood of my cloak, making sure that my face is come from them. Austin's son reached out and take my hand. He raises it to his lips. 
Paulson looks at me with a generous smile. Don't worry, I won't let anything happen to you. I'm worried, but I am not worried about myself. I am more worried about the people's safety, as well as our friends. I am not forgiving myself if something bad happened to them. You're not the only one responsible for praying everyone here. Remember what I always share with your friend, right? I don't know what the answer. I know the burden is mine to carry. I know. I look at him and smile. Thank you. I told you many, so many times that I would do anything for you, Rose. I feel the same way. Austin wraps his arms around my wrist and draws me close to him. Austin? He takes a hand and places a kiss on my fingers. You worry too much, Princess. How I wish I could share your opinions and his current. How does he manage to act like this in front of so many people? At the dark at the times, the king is here. I won't announce the king's presence, and Watson and I meet turn attention to the stage. He takes a step away from me, arms at his side, saying something sharp. I walks to the center of the plan with a turned smile. Good day, my loyal subjects. Everyone goes silent at the sound of his voice. I know that much has happened in our kingdom since the late Kling Gurn passed away. We are still in our efforts to find the King's Mur, his very own daughter. Rest assured that Justice shall find the Kremlin, even if she is our own princess. Anyone who is able to crown her to the palace will be rewarded handsomely. Members of the crown began chatting along each other. It hurts that people believe him, but I cannot blame them. Um, and my battery is about to dead. But I got chargeable batteries I bought, so peace, guys.